debate. The Honourable Member for Victoria. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm delighted to stand today uh, and speak to motion M485, uh, prepared by my colleague from Riviere du Nord. Um, really in the spirit of getting this government to take tax havens seriously. The specific motion is, however, narrower than that, Mr. Speaker. It fundamentally asks that the government study and measure Canadian tax losses to international tax havens and tax evasion in order to determine what is called the tax gap, the amount of money we should be collecting but are not. I think it's a very timely motion, Mr. Speaker, as we are in front of the tax clock in the next short while Canadians must be submitting their tax returns. And I know I am concerned that my fellow Canadians pay their fair share. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Unfortunately, many, many Canadians, large corporations, family uh, trusts, uh, and, in, and wealthy Canadians are sending their money offshore to avoid the incidence of tax in our country. So this motion simply asks the Conservatives to do what our allies in other countries of the world already do, namely put their hands around the size of the problem. Just what is the tax gap? It's often been said if you do not uh, measure something, you won't be able to effectively manage that thing. And I think that's what we're asking here. The government will say, oh, why bother? You know, it's not going to give us exact information as to how many billions of dollars we're losing every year, and I'll return to that. But in fact, Sweden, Australia, the United States, the United Kingdom are all doing that. And by now, there's fairly good economic measures, fairly good techniques and uh, in order to uh, do exactly this, which is to measure the tax gap. Mr. Speaker, that I think is the first step of getting this government to take the tax havens problem seriously. Um, in my writing, I was talking to someone who owns a small coffee shop. They were saying to me, I, my effective tax rate is much less than the big Starbucks down the corner. And why is that? Because Starbucks is able to arrange its affairs by use of international tax havens to really pay an effective very low rate of tax. And indeed, they were caught on that in England. And in England, the demonstrations led it to make a voluntary tax payment in the tens of millions of pounds because they recognized they need a social license to do business, which is great when they're caught. But what about the small coffee shop owner in my riding who cannot simply compete because his rate of tax is so much higher than that of a company that can use these tax havens. Now, we asked the minister to do just that, to measure the tax gap. And I wrote to the former minister on March 8, 2013, saying, please estimate the tax gap the way that our allies have done. No response. But apparently, tens of trillions, with a T, trillions, Mr. Speaker, of dollars worldwide are being lost to tax havens. It's estimated that somewhere between, and who knows, because the government won't measure it, five and eight billion dollars a year may be lost to tax havens in this country. Think of what we could do with that money if the government were to take this problem seriously. Think about what we could do with hospitals and infrastructure and the like in our country. That is why this is not a theoretical issue, it's an intensely practical and immediate issue, and one which, Mr. Speaker, our allies are doing a lot better on than we. I think of Mr. Cameron in the United Kingdom, who at least appears to be taking action, and certainly in the United States there's new efforts underway as well. The government is simply taking baby steps to address the issues that we're talking about today. But the amount of money, as I say, is enormous. But Mr. Speaker, also enormous is the amount of cuts that the government is making to the Canada Revenue Agency. I hear so many people come to me and say, we can't do our jobs because they've, they've dismissed so many of us. They've cut our budget so dramatically, and they expect Canadians to take them at their word when they say, oh, we're getting tough on tax havens. We're getting tough on those who evade their taxes. It's simply not so, Mr. Speaker. And the number of people I've talked to from that agency who shake their head uh, bear witness to that. Now, Mr. Speaker, the former parliamentary budget officer was asked to measure the tax gap. Essentially, it went like this. Since the government won't do it, since the CRA, the Canada Revenue Agency, refuses to do it, I'll tell you what, 
why don't you do it, Mr. Parliamentary Budget Officer? And he said, I'd love to. No problem. All I need is the data from the government to do the job. And he asked, and he asked, and of course, nothing happened. He wasn't even given the data to do the work that our fellow, our allies in other countries are beginning to do so effectively. And so therefore, Mr. Speaker, the government's rhetoric on, on this issue is not matched by the reality. They are not giving the CRA the resources to do the job. They're not hiring the experts required to go after the very sophisticated people who use these tax havens inappropriately. And they won't even tell us the size of the problem, which is, of course, what this motion is all about. Mr. Speaker, it's shocking to report that in 2011, 24 percent, almost a quarter of Canadian investment overseas went to, are you ready, tax havens. Twelve tax havens, five of the top five of which are Barbados, Cayman Islands, Ireland, Luxembourg, and Bermuda. $130 billion in 2011, it's in one year alone. And as I say, at the same time, government cuts the CRA so they can't even do their job. So we think can, that Canadians deserve to know how much taxes are being evaded through the use of these tax havens, and they will not measure it. That's the point of this, of this, uh, of this first step of taking this problem seriously. Now, this government has no trouble spending $550, uh, $550 million on advertising, often pro for programs that haven't even been passed, but it's cut $250 million from the Canada Revenue Agency, obviously hindering the ability of that agency to do what is proposed. So we think instead of cutting employees from the compliance and enforcement divisions of the Canada Revenue Agency, that the Conservatives should begin investing additional resources to recover lost revenue. Maybe that's the way to get their intention, Mr. Speaker, to use the word invest, because the rate of return if they did this would be enormous. We've seen that in many of the countries I've mentioned. I just wish these, this government would likewise uh, wake up and smell the coffee. We made an, the New Democratic Party made a number of recommendations in the Finance Committee, which I'm proud to be a member of, studying tax havens. The first of which was, once again, as follows. This was in the supplementary report, not accepted, sadly, by the government. And that is this, that the federal government study and measure to the greatest accuracy possible, Canadian tax losses to international tax havens and tax evasion in order to determine the Canadian federal tax gap." Close quote. That's exactly what this motion would do. It's once again asking that the government get it, its hands around this very, very serious problem. Also, we asked, among other things, that the government go after those who enable tax evasion including accountants, lawyers, and other professionals. We have seen egregious examples where people have come from tax havens, Switzerland comes to mind, where bank secrecy is the, has been the rule, come to the United States and come to Canada and being demonstrated to be telling those people, advising them how to avoid paying their fair share of taxes, how to cheat the Canadian and the American tax system. It happened in Denmark recently. It's happening in a number of countries. And it seems to me obvious that we should make it harder for those who enable that to occur, to really bring the full force of the law down on those who don't pay their fair share, and to those who enable people to not pay their fair share. That is another part of the problem that definitely needs to be, that needs to be addressed. So we believe that it's absolutely essential, Mr. Speaker, that this motion be passed. We hope the government will see fit to join other countries, like, as I said, the United Kingdom, France, Sweden, Australia, all of which have taken this very first step to get our hands around and measure the problem so we can begin, I hope, to give it the resources, uh, the, the expertise needed to actually take this issue seriously. And as we fill out our taxes at this time of year, I hope all Canadians will urge their government to do the right thing and stop this tax haven abuse once and for all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The honor resuming debate, the honorable member for York.